What is up Bruins fans? Today we're going to be recapping day one of free agency for the Boston Bruins as we finally found out today where all the cap went. We think back to this previous week of all the names that have been on the chopping block. We think to this week with the trades. You think about guys like Lauko and Allmark. You think to the forwards like Jake Dabrowski and Danton Heinen. And then to the defensemen like Matt Grizzlick and Derek Forbert. All players that have since departed the Boston Bruins. But... The, the question was raised, what was to come for the Boston Bruins and where was that cap going to go? Today we had that question answered on none other than Canada Day, July 1st, happy Canada Day to all our Canadian viewers, but as well, July 1st means free agent frenzy, day one. Let's talk about, of course, the big name, the one everyone is talking about, that is Elias Lindholm. The center the Bruins have been looking at for a very long time, we even think back to this previous trade deadline and he was one of the players that they were hot to trot trying to get you know we saw guys like even guys like jake debrusque you know were rumored in that deal still you know vancouver gets debrusque we get boston gets lindholm and here we are right so what we're looking at here 7.75 million over seven years remember he is 29 years old so there is a little bit of that trade-off we'll get to the contract in just a second here but the player you're getting here 75 games played 15 goals and 29 assists split between Calgary and Vancouver. But this was a guy who struggled, especially towards the end of the season. So those numbers don't really reflect the kind of player you're getting. You know, you're getting a good player here. You're getting that finally that second line center or first line, depending on where you want to sort of position that passion at Zaka. Lindholm line, which will be sort of the line you're looking at there. But, you know, this is a good player who's finally going to fill one of the biggest voids on this Bruins team, that center that center depth, which is what they need. A high-quality player that can play the center line, that is what you're getting out of Lindholm, and he is going to be extremely beneficial. Now, of course, I've seen it on both sides, right? You have the people that are, yes, we finally got our second-line center. Amazing. We finally checked it off the box. But then you have the other side who are normally not very happy and they're sort of looking for anything to complain about. And that's the side who says, well, the contract's a little long. And sure, you know what? The contract might be a little long. But let's talk about this a little bit more in depth because the truth is in seven years, he'll be 36. Sure, he'll be getting paid 7.75. But the other thing you have to remember is that the cap is going back up again. So 7.75 might be a decent percentage now but think as the cap slowly but surely starts to rise in seven years who knows where that number might be it might even be over 100 you know time will tell right that's the thing that you have to keep in mind here is that the future isn't fixed which means that you can expect the cap to continue to go up you know so as much as it might seem like a lot right now to think about in the future just remember that the cap goes up with the contract so in that sense, you know, 7.75 might be a lot right now, but in the future it might not be. So just keep that in mind as we move along here. We'll move along to the second pickup of the day. You know, Lindholm was a huge pickup, but in my opinion, there was no better pickup today than Nikita Zadorov. Five million for six years. He's a six foot six, 235 pound left defenseman. And we think about it, we sort of talked about it off the top here. Remember who was moving out? You had guys like Forbert and Grizzlick and Shattenkirk. Those three. What are they all? Left defensemen. And this is where Zadorov is really going to play a key role for this team. When we think about him, you know, he's a physical defenseman. Sort of replaces that guy like Forbert, who was really good on the penalty kill, but had trouble skating. Zadorov fills both those problems there. You know, he's a physical player. He's going to push guys around. But at the same time, he can play a solid game. He has good skating ability, and he plays the game the right way. We even saw it in an interview today where he even talked about, you know, he's, he said, you know, I'm not going to try and play like Big Z. I'm not Big Z. I want to be my own person, which is great. You know, that's exactly, he doesn't want to live up to the expectations. I think it was something along the lines of what he said. But the truth is, this is a guy that can play the game the right way. He's going to be physical. He's going to live up to Bruins style. And I just know already that Bruins fans are going to love this guy. He is a player that plays the game the Bruins style of hockey way. And he is going to be a huge part of the Bruins for years to come. You know, you lock him up for six years, great. He's, a, once again, sort of in that 29-year-old range. You know, when he's out of this contract, he'll be 35, right? So if you're going to argue about the contract, sure, we can talk about it like that. But the truth is, only $5 million. Think about that in a couple of years, what that'll be worth. 
he is a huge pickup for the Bruins. And he's going to play really, really good hockey, but he's also going to be that lockdown, physical, defensive style defenseman who can pick up points the other way as well. He's not necessarily just a defensive player. He is able to join in on rushes, and this is where I think a guy like Zdorov is really going to find his home in Boston. And I can't wait to see what he does. The next guy, uh, and this is one of the more underrated pickups, in my opinion, from today. You know, you had two really, really good pickups, key name players, which is what you're looking for, especially with the trading of both guys like Allmark, you know, trying to clear that cap room. You can tell, you know, guys like DeBrusque as well heading out. Those are the guys you're trying to sort of clear some cap room for, which is where Lindholm and Zadora fit in. But now let's take a look at one of the underrated pickups of today. That is Max Jones, left winger from Anaheim last season. One million for two years, six foot three, 220 pound left winger. And this is a guy who will fit that third and fourth line really, really nicely. This is a guy who plays the proper way, full 200 foot game, and he's physical, exactly what the Bruins have been lacking, especially on those lower lines. You know, look, they play good hockey. That's where guys like Lauko sort of fit in. You know, they're, they're, they were quick before. They sort of got around checks. But what, we, what they really needed to do is find some physicality. And that's where I think a guy like Max Jones really fits in. Think about some of the other guys that they brought in. You know, guys like Kostelik, the other guys that are already there with Frederick and Brazo and, and even Beecher. You know, big bodies who can play the game the right way, the physical way, that is what you're looking for. And that's where I think these kind of lines, especially picking up a guy like Max Jones, is really going to help. And, you know, just to even put it even into context even further, 82 games played, 25 goals, 35 assists, which is more points than Elias Lindholm had, you know. So think of it on that side. In my opinion, he's a great fit along guys like Frederick, you know, uh, and even a guy like Matt, Matt, uh, Patra, and he's, you know, that's what you're looking for. Matt Potra as well. You know, that's the kind of line you're looking for to sort of really build it up together. And I think from an outside perspective, that's the key to this team is finding guys that can play a physical style, but also are going to play the game the right way, play the full 200 foot game. And that's where a guy like Max Jones is really going to fit in this team nicely. But that will conclude the majority of the report for the, the NHL side. But now let's take a look at the other five signings from today that I think still have a really good pickup value that people aren't really talking about. I'll start here first with Riley Tuft. $775,000 one year. Played with the Colorado Eagles this year in the AHL. 67 games played, 23 goals, 22 assists. This guy is six foot six, 230 pounds as a left winger. Today was a day of physicality for the Bruins. And this is where, you know, we sort of see this team start to transition into that team of old. You know, this is a guy who's going to play a physical style, who's going to be able to drop the gloves when needed, but he's also going to be there to be that physical threat, play a full 200 foot game, which is exactly what you need. And, you know, he's still a good player. You know, he's, he posted 23 goals, 22 assists in the AHL. You know, I mean, Take that as you will. You know, he has the ability to score, but the truth is he's going to be able to play that full 200-foot game, which is what you're really looking for as guys coming up from Providence. That's what you're looking for in my eyes. So that's where I think a guy like Tuft is really going to be able to sort of step up his game as he moves into that first the Providence style and then eventually into the NHL. And then the next guy we're going to talk about here is Cole Kepke. 775,000 one year as well. Syracuse Crunch, six foot one, 195, 53 games played, 20 goals, 19 assists in the AHL. He is, a, once again, another left winger. They like their left wingers today. But this was the, this is another guy, you know, sort of plays not so much the physical style. He, ha, he has still a little bit of that physical aggressive game in him. But the truth is this guy is a little bit more crafty with his, with his work. This is a guy who's going to sort of play that full style once again that you're looking for, out of, out of the, out of, especially in Providence. But as they transition into the NHL as well, you know, they play the full full 200-foot game, which is exactly what you need out of your bottom line forwards. And who knows, maybe in a couple of years, he might even fill in a sort of that fourth line role. You know, once you see guys like Beecher go up to the, to the top line, Potter go up to the top line, it's only really a matter of time before that kind of thing happens. And, and even on the left side, you know, you think about Marshawn aging out. 
So it's only really a matter of time before the left wingers come up, the centers move up. It's just sort of how they, the lines move up along the years will be definitely interesting to see for the Bruins. And I think Kepke's the kind of guy who might even move into that third line left winger slot as the years go on. You think of a guy like Max Jones right now, what's he going to be in a couple of years? You know, you got him for two years at one million. Will he move up? Might be something to keep note of there. The next guy I really want to talk about here, and this is one of the one of the more underrated pickups of today. That is Jordan Osterley, left defenseman, seven hundred seventy-five thousand for two years. He's six foot one eighty-seven pound defenseman, thirty games played, two goals, seventeen assists. But the truth is about this guy is this guy is the epitome of a leader. And this is where you think back to a couple of years, right? The players that you think of sort of filling this kind of role is guys like Kevin Shattenkirk or a guy like Kevin Miller, right? Where they play, they don't necessarily play a lot, but they're there for the young guys. They're there to provide leadership for the younger players, help them develop their games. And that's where I think a guy like Osterley really helps especially in the mental space for a team like the Bruins and the Providence Bruins, especially, you know, with a lot of young talent coming up through the ranks, you really need to get that mindset sorted. And I think that's where a guy like Osterley can really provide some wisdom and experience. You know, this is a guy that's played over 300 NHL games. He's a guy that's been around the league. He's, you know, you think about all the teams he's played on. That's one of the things that I think a guy like Osterley can really bring to a team like the Bruins and, as much as he might not be an on-ice impact, it's what he'll do off the ice that I think will really change a lot of fans' minds about him. You know, you won't see it on the score sheet. A lot of fans probably won't be happy about it. But when you think about it in the long run, this is the kind of guy that's an off-ice asset that could become very, very valuable to this team. I would not be surprised to see him sort of stay in the NHL, or the AHL rather, for now. But who knows, in a couple of years, maybe finds his game a little bit more in the AHL and really transitions in. This is a guy that I think can actually really help the Bruins, not just on the ice, but off the ice. But moving along here to another pickup here with a right defenseman, Billy Sweezy, 775000 for two years, Cleveland Monsters, six two, 205, 57 games played, one goal and three assists. This guy's a little bit more of that defensive-minded defender, plays an aggressive style. This is a guy who's he's only 6'2", but he plays the game like a 6-6 Zadorov type defenseman where he really is physical in the play. You know, he, he, he works his way around, which is exactly, you know, what you're looking for out of the smaller defenseman. You know, he's still not small. He's six foot two, which is quite large. But, you know, in terms of that massive type defenseman that you normally see throwing the body around, this is a guy who's a little bit smaller than that, but he still plays that physical style, which is what you're looking for, especially out of your defense core. And the last one here is the left winger, Jeffrey Vale, from 775,000, two years from the Manitoba Moose. This is the only guy from the Bruins signings today that hasn't played uh, in the NHL last season. So, you know, once again, take that as you will. He's a player that I think more or less could transition in, in a couple of years. You know, his contract next year will shift to a one-way deal, which means as soon as he gets promoted, he can't come back down without passing through waivers. So that might be something to keep note of. But he's six foot 195, 69 games played, 17 goals and 23 assists. He's a guy that I think, you know, could have the potential at some point to move into that fourth line-ish slot. I don't think the Bruins are going to really take that big of a look at him. You know, more so sort of that third or second line left winger in Providence. He's a, still a solid player, but I just don't really see him, especially with the depth that they have now, the Bruins have now uh, in their NHL club on the left side. I find it difficult to see him moving up, but you never know, right? Injuries happen. At some point, they're going to need a guy. That might be your guy like VL really takes it to the next notch. But I'm sure the reason why you're all here is because you want to see the lines. So I'm going to give you the lines. This is my mock line for so far. You know, there's still one contract to go. You can see here 22 to 23. I know there's been a lot of rumors going around about the 7, 7.9. This, the trick to my lines here is that I'm assuming that uh, Vinny Letiri will be sent down or Patrick Brown will be sent down to make room for that 23-man roster. You know, Swayman still has to be signed, so he's the last of, the, of that extra 23rd pick. You know, what's to come? And I think that's what a lot of people are wondering. We've talked about it in, the, in a, lot of, a lot of the preview videos we did, is what were they going to do with that first line right winger? And nothing yet. And that's one of the things that I was curious to see in Don Sweeney's post-interview today. 
But what he said was, you know, we're just going to let the, the players find out for themselves who it's going to be, whether that be a guy like Geeky or whether that be a guy like Lysel or Merkulov. Who is it going to be that's going to step it up? We want to leave the spot open. So that's what the Bruins' plan is, and that might be a good plan. That might work out to be a bad plan. We'll see. You know, time will tell. But I think it is a good idea to give some opportunities to your younger guys to step up into that top role. And who knows, maybe even a guy like Frederick could sneak into that top line role, playing alongside guys like Coyle and Marshawn. You know, Frederick plays a really good style of hockey in terms of how you want to play on that top line. He's been sort of sort of squandered away on that third line, more or less. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a guy like Frederick really take that next step. Another guy that really could play up there is a guy like Brazo. I think a lot of people kind of forget about him and kind of the way he plays, but he's a bigger body. You know, playing alongside guys like Coyle and Marshawn might actually benefit his game. You know, the trick to this is finding guys that play well together. And I think it's not really something you can find on paper, but more so experiment. And I have no doubt as training camp goes on these next couple of weeks, or as we head towards the opening games of the season, you know, they're going to be experimenting with the lines to see who's that next step in. And I think it really is only a matter of time before the Bruins find that top line set, a top line right winger rather that they've been looking for all this time. And I would not be surprised to see them try and go out and, and get a guy as well. You know, maybe it's maybe it's in a year from now they, they decide next free agency. It's, okay, let's go get a right winger. And, and you get the extra cap coming in. And then the question becomes, what's next for this team? And I think it's not something you can say right now what it's going to be. You know, you still have to take a look at what this team needs right now. And that's signing goaltender like Jeremy Swayman. You know, he traded away Allmark. You took a gamble before Swayman was signed, and now you're sort of paying the price for it. You know, Swayman's coming in knowing is a fact, right? That's always a scary thing, knowing is a fact that he's going to be the go-to guy, which means he has the negotiating power. He has the arbitration as well, right? Is this going to be coming down to an arbitration agreement? Time will tell, of course, but we'll have full coverage here on the channel, so definitely stay tuned. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like, if you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on day one of free agency. Until next time, see you.